I went on energy.gov yesterday yeah. and I saw some um, two amazing headlines. Yes. I saw an announcement by the energy department about uh, offshore wind. Uh, it's like an $18 million investment yeah. in offshore wind. And the energy also department also approved uh, clean energy infrastructure for the New England power grid. Now, given the current administration's orientation toward clean energy and climate change, I was so surprised to see this. Yeah. What's your take on that? The future is here. And that although some are denying climate change and some are questioning uh, whether we should return to dependence, heavier dependence on mm -hmm. coal, uh, the reality that is recognized by most people today is that we're moving in the direction of a clean energy future and that that creates enormous economic opportunity for the American people. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking at where there is job growth in this country, there is very substantial job growth in solar and mm -hmm. wind power. Mm -hmm. And the investments that are now being made in those technology deployments that you described will create opportunities for all Americans. Interesting. So you don't think it's a false choice between clean energy uh, and, uh, and job growth? No, I actually think the opposite. Mm -hmm. I think that as we see the decline of use of fossil fuel, what we want to do is invest in mm -hmm. the new technologies that will give the American people opportunities mm -hmm. and couple that investment with training programs mm -hmm. that will ensure that workers are skilled to meet the needs of employers in these sectors. So for example, in the time I was at the Department of Energy, we innovated a program called Solar Ready Vets, in which we went on to Mer American military military bases mm -hmm. and uh, partnered with the solar industry to train veterans, those who were transitioning from active duty to become mm -hmm. veterans, uh, for jobs that existed in the solar sector mm -hmm. where the employers needed a skilled workforce, looked upon veterans as a terrific uh, source of that uh, workforce. And the Training was provided with funding from the federal government, the mm -hmm. Department of Labor and the Department of Energy, partnering with community colleges and those employers. Wow. And we saw an ecosystem that grew up around those opportunities. So that's the kind of work that we need to do more mm -hmm. of as we see the development and deployment of these uh, new technologies mm -hmm. to ensure that we're assisting workers who are in uh, sectors which are not growing mm -hmm. to develop the skill set that will enable them to be employed yeah. in sectors that are. You know, and, that's, and that gets to another point. I mean, that's transitioning vets from military to to uh, private sector yes. uh, work. And, 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 and that is similar in a sense to a lot of the, the things we're asking of folks in the coal industry and exactly. other fossil fuel industry. And, they, and there are people, there has to be some sort of retraining because I think yes. that gets left behind in this conversation. Absolutely. So it's a very important undertaking and we need to be looking at it regionally because every region has a different energy mix. And of course, in, in states like West Virginia, there are a lot of people who are hurting mm -hmm. uh, because the coal industry is declining and coal-fired power plants aren't being built. Mm -hmm. However, there's huge growth in the natural gas industry. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to be doing is targeting our support, transition support to those who are seeing their jobs go away mm -hmm. and assist them with developing the skill set that will enable them to be employed in the sectors that are more dynamic.